Good day, students. Mr. Bowlby here. I'm going to go ahead and start the lesson one for the skills portion of the CKLA. We're still in um, unit four. This is skills lesson one. Chapter one, Rome then and now. A lot of this is going to be similar to what we covered in the domain, but we're going to work a little bit more on the reading portion. In class, this will be your time to read to me and to read to each other, mostly. But we're just going to look through the slides and see what we um, see what we have for the sake of this presentation. Okay. So make sure you have a copy of the reader. Stories from ancient Rome. Very good. Title of the reader is Stories from Ancient Rome. <laughs> and we know the city of Rome is located in Italy. Talked about that in the domain. So we'll ask about anything else that you know about Rome as far as um, what you may have heard about Rome or what's going on in Rome right now or you know, past, present detailings of Rome. Any books that were written to Rome or by Rome or from Romans or that kind of thing. Turn to the table of contents in your reader. Now, obviously, there's a lot of chapters in here. It's like 14. <laughs> so we're going to spend the next four weeks um, talking about these and, this, and the civilization of Rome and reading about it. So you just flip through the reader and kind of get an idea of the images and pictures and captions you see. We're going to learn a lot about how the book's put together. Now, in this reader, we're going to be introduced to a teacher named Mrs. Teachwell and her students. Um, they all have fun little names to remember. Charlie Chatter, <laughs> Rachel Reedmunch, Tim Timetable, and Dave King. Dave King's probably my favorite. King Dave. <laughs> okay. Uh, so today we're going to read the first chapter, uh, Rome, Then and Now. And you can follow along in your reader as well as on the slides as I go through them. So you might want to share about how um, the city has changed over time. Uh, maybe you've seen photographs of your grandparents and how time changes. And even as among the last 500 years, you know, we're looking at a city and talking about a city that's from 2,000 years ago. A lot of the stuff that they gave to us, we still have in society today. Here's some vocabulary words to look over. Um, broken up by a syllable to help you remember them. Civilization. Etruscan. Conquer, Mediterranean, Jesus, BC, and BCE. These are all good to keep track of your vocabulary. All right, chapter one. Let's look at this. This is uh, going to be located on page two and three of it. All right, good. This is Rome, said Mrs. Teachwell, pointing to the black dot on the classroom map. But this is Rome too, she added, and she traced a circle that was so large it seemed to touch all four sides of the map. Students looked confused. How can it be both? Charlie Chowder shouted out. I'll explain, Miss Teachwell said, but please raise your hand if you would like to speak. Charlie Chowder nodded. It was not the first time he had heard this. In fact, Miss Teachwell had asked him to raise his hand many times, but it was hard for Charlie. His mouth seemed to be faster than his hands. <laughs> Rome started out as a little town along the Tiber River, Mrs. Teachwell explained. Okay, so a couple of quick things I want to point out. We have a picture, and underneath the picture we have a caption. The caption basically tells us what's in the picture. In this case, it's Mrs. Teachwell and her students looking at the map. You can kind of see that Charlie Chatter is probably this kid back here chatting. <laughs> anyway, there's the teacher and pictures and Rome that she's talking about. We have the chapter beginning with, of course, someone talking. Now, when somebody is talking in a narrative or a story, that is called dialogue or monologue if they're just talking to themselves. But in this case, it's dialogue because they're talking to other people. And she has her sentence that she speaks in quotations. These little lines right here and here are quotation marks. On the end of this is Rome, so this is Rome, said Mrs. Teachwell, pointing to a black dot in the classroom map. And we'll continue talking about quotation marks later too. 
So why are Mrs. T. Twelve students confused when she talks about the location of Rome on the map? In this case, she said the small dot represented the location of Rome. Then she outlined a much larger area. It's like, well, they can both be Rome because Rome is the whole area. You can talk about how Rome is the city. It's like you say Oklahoma City, and then you have Oklahoma. You also have New York and the state of New York. You have New York City, and then you have New York, the state. That's probably the best way to describe that one. Now, what is the name of the river? If you look at the end of this page over here, you saw that it said Tiber River, or the Tiber River is the name of the river which the town was started on. All right. All right, next page. <clears throat> like Egypt on the Nile? Charlie asked. Yes, said Mrs. Teachwell. Well, let's see that hand. The students giggled. As Charlie has just reminded us, Mrs. Teachwell said, many civilizations spring up along the banks of a river. Rome was no exception. It sprang up here on the banks of the Tiber River among seven hills. At first, Rome was just a few houses on a hill. Then it grew and grew and grew. After a while, people started building houses on other hills nearby. Then the little towns on the hills grew together to make a big city. In fact, to this day, Rome is known as the city on seven hills. Then the Romans fought wars with their neighbors. The Romans won most of these wars. They defeated the Etruscans, who lived north of them. They conquered the Greeks, who had settled to the south as well. It, wa it wasn't long before they controlled most of the piece of land that we call Italy. Mrs. Teachwell traced the outline of Italy with her finger. This is the present day um, picture of Rome here in the Tiber River. You can see they built a very nice bridge going over the river. Okay, so look at the word, look at the word civilization in the glossary in the back of your book. Okay, you can also see, you'll also see the word civilizations used in this chapter, which is the plural version, meaning more than one. Okay, the vocabulary um, for expression also is in there as well. So anytime you need to look up a word, go to the back of your book here. It's got glossary words. All the different words that we talk about are going to be back there. Okay. Even the word instruction, instruction, I'm going to learn how to say that word eventually, are part of the civilization north of Rome. All right. So, why does Charlie think the Roman civilization is like Egypt? Well, the Egyptian river or civilization, Egyptian civilization grew up next to the Nile River. Rome grew up next to the Tiber River. This is very normal for a civilization to spring up alongside a river. Why do you think it would happen? Because you can grow more food, you have transportation on the river, trading, water. Water is the main source of life. Water and light, you know, are very important. And then what groups of people did the Romans fight? We know they conquered a lot of people, the Estrusians and the Greeks. Okay, and we know that is correct because they, um, it says so in the text. <laughs> in the book, we said in the, in the book we're reading right there in the chapter. So that's part of the thing. When you're, looking, when you're looking for an answer, look in the text we just read for the answer, and then be able to tell me where you found it. It's very important. It's called um, citing your source. Citing sources of where you got information is very important. When you're answering questions, when you're writing papers, when you're doing an interview, when anybody's asking you something, you say, where did you get your information? Cite your source. Well, that's what you do. You cite what book you got it from. When you're doing research papers, that's what you do. You cite the source, okay? All right, next page. Check it out, Charlie Chatter shouted. Italy looks like a boot. Yes, said Mrs. Teachwell. Italy does look like a boot. But please, Charlie, raise your hand. This is your last warning. Now, does anyone know what this body of water that the boot of Italy sticks out into was called? Rachel Reed much, who always had her nose in a book, raised her hand. Mrs. Teachwell called on her. It's called the Mediterranean, said Rachel. That's right, said Mrs. Teachwell. This is the Mediterranean Sea. Rome grew so much that as, at its peak, the Romans controlled all of the land around the Mediterranean Sea. They took over most of Spain and France. They took over this area that we call the Balkan, Balkans. They took over Greece and much of Turkey. 
pretty much everything you see in yellow. <laughs> and the coast of North Africa. Tim Timetable, who loved to learn about when things happen, put up his hand. When was all of this happening? Look at the map here. You can see Egypt is not labeled, but the students, you can kind of know generally it was over here by the Nile River. Right? This whole area here is taken over. All right. Check it out, Charlie Chatter shouted. It only looks like a boot. We already read that page. What other countries in the area that Rome took over? That's the Spain, France, Balkans, Turkey, Middle East, Egypt, South, coast of North Africa. So a whole lot of area. Okay. We know the boot. Looks like a boot, Italy. All right, okay, <clears throat> so to answer Tim Timetable's Tim question, we move on to the next page. Rome started growing about 2,500 years ago. This is Teach Well Explained. It started growing about 500 years before the birth of Jesus in the years we call BC or BCE. It was still growing when Jesus was born. In fact, Jesus was born here in part of the Middle East that was controlled by the Romans. Same timetable made note of the date. This is Teach Well went on. We will be studying Rome for three weeks or so. Each day we will have a report on the topic connected to ancient Rome. I'll give the first few reports. Then each of you can do some research and give the next few. How does that sound? The kids cheered. They were eager to learn more about Rome. Rachel Reed much always knew quite a lot. Already knew quite a lot. Tim Timetable had lots of questions about what happened when. As for Charlie Charter, he was looking forward to the day when he would get to give his report. Then he would get to talk without having to raise his hand first. <laughs> Here's some parts of some Roman buildings that remain today. See these um, are called ruins, right? Over 2,000 years ago. It's a long time. So when did the Roman civilization start? 2,500 years ago, about 500 years before Jesus was born. Uh, so look at the caption there. You can see that Rome, all the Roman, all the ruins and all that. So imagine what it would have been like to have ancient buildings like this one in a town or city where you live today. I mean, they're probably a pretty common place to them now. If you live in that city and those are and the ruins have been there, you're probably used to seeing them. For us, you know, if I if I went to visit the you know Greece or Rome, which I haven't been to, and saw those, it would be really astounding. I'd sit there and just marvel and stare at it for the longest time. If you were there for you know, it was always there, you probably would get pretty used to it. And of course, it looks a little like modern day buildings. If you go to a bank or a city hall, you can see very similar structures. All right. So these are some discussion questions to ask in class. You can kind of just go through them yourself. How did ancient Rome and present day Rome differ in size? Okay, obviously there's much differences in the larger day, present day Rome does not take up as much space. The Europeans kind of descended from the Roman Empire. Tim Timetable will enjoy the chapters that include what? Tim Timetable likes dates, right? Good. Because he, um, well, is interested in dates with evidence by his last name. Now, and that would be number, that would be letter D, dates. What is the, probably should have put that. Oh, okay. Okay. What is the main idea of the chapter? Ancient Roman, ancient Rome grew as Romans won wars and conquered lands. It was set in present day Italy, which is located in the Mediterranean Sea. All right. Now here's an activity page for you to do based on this chapter. Just to answer those questions, those will be available in your workbook that you're going to be given, the CKLA Unit 4 workbook. Yeah, you'll be doing those, and you'll possibly have those on campus as well. Alrighty, spelling words. Just go ahead and read over these. I will read them to the class. Just, I'm going to read them real quick so you have them um, read to you at least once. All right, we're going to read them many times. Tarnish, portion, circulate, Turkey, worship, marbles, motor, servant, doctor, surgery, immortal, messenger, giraffe, sir, sword, barbecue, slurp, mirth. Now those are all what we call R controlled words. The R in the word kind of takes control of the word. Then there's two challenge words in here that are not um, following that same rule. 
that are common words for us to, to remember. The word above and beginning. Well, there's also a content word that I will not um, count you wrong for spelling incorrectly. That is the Mediterranean. Since it does come up in our um, unit of study, that is the word for you to remember, try to spell. If you spell it right, that's great. If you don't get it wrong, don't worry about it. We're just trying to grow our brains. Alrighty. So you can just look again at the words that you see are our controlled vowels. So you can kind of see where I went ahead and highlighted all the R's in there. Or the ER, depending on how it's spelled. All right, now look at the word tarnish. Tarnish. Okay. Portion. Portion. Circulate. Circulate. Turkey. Turkey. Worship. Worship. Marbles. Marbles. Motor. Motor. Servant. Servant. Doctor. Doctor. Surgery. Surgery. I'll say that one again. Surgery. Immortal. Immortal. Messenger. Messenger. Giraffe. Giraffe. Sir. Sir. Sword, sword, barbecue, barbecue, slurp, <laughs> slurp, mirth, mirth, above, above. Beginning, beginning. Mediterranean, Mediterranean. Med, it, er, rain, he, in. Okay, breaking it up into small parts helps, it, helps you spell it better too. All right, so the challenge words above and beginning are part of the spelling list because they're used often, but they don't follow this week's spelling pattern of our controlled words, okay? So you can say, um, like, the eagle flies high above us, above, right? Beginning today, we will eat healthier lunches. Yay. Okay, so the content word is a little harder than others, but again, we're not going to penalize you for misspelling it. All right. So just um, notice Mediterranean does, not, does follow one of the spelling patterns, which is the ER, pronounced er. You see that when you see the word mediter er -ranian. Okay, you hear the er. You hear that often in the words of the spelling list, right? Okay, like messenger, right? Okay. All right, so this is a chart that we can help see what our where our words come in to play on the spell on the spelling chart now this is a diagram diagram if you see the the line like that it means it's used often you see that that sound often okay and the smaller the, the little dashes the less often or less frequent you're going to hear that that's that pronunciation, okay? That R, er, or, okay? All right, so let's just look here. <clears throat> look at the AR, all right? There's only one spelling there, and it's a car. So when you see that word, 
And you also can look at other, other spellings too. All right. So the words in our spelling list that follow this example are tarnish, marbles, and barbecue. <laughs> I kind of like that right there, the AR here. All right. So let's find the row for OR. We'll follow it across. And there's six different spellings which are used frequently. The most is this one right here. They use the most frequently. Okay. It's the only spelling sound that we are studying this week, or the only spelling for that sound we're studying this week. Okay. You'll hear that in the word portion, immortal, and sword. All right, so let's keep going here. All right, so look at the ER row. Okay, you see the spellings there. Okay, the power bar, that dash power bar tells you how um, frequent they're used, right? So the ER, er, and the word her, is used most for the spelling er. Yeah. You have r, er, or. So look at the four words that follow this pattern, all right? For the um, er, okay, we have servant, surgery, messenger, and Mediterranean, all right? You can look up those words um, in the dictionary. Now, let's continue on through here and you can just kind of see the different words usage. Now, we break up all the spelling words into this list. We can see where they're used in, according to their spellings. The tarnish, marbles, barbecue, listen to the sound of the word. You hear the R, tarnish, marbles, barbecue. So practice each word to yourself, you know, read it aloud and you kind of listen for the sound as you read it. You see the OR spelling, portion, immortal, and sword, okay? All right, so you're gonna just keep looking at each sentence, um, kind of come up with your own sentence for each word and see if it makes sense. Because remember, context is important too. A word can mean different things based on context sometimes. Some words can, all right? Okay. And of course, you'll take home some worksheets from your, your workbook to study at home. Okay. Thank you. If you have any questions, please let me know.